Recently, I took my first look at the Commodore 64 and some of its basic capabilities, but today, I'm gonna to get to play some games on the Commodore 64. It's right here on Vintage Geek. Just a reminder, if you like vintage tech and vintage computers, be sure to like and subscribe. It's gonna help us a lot as we grow, and I urge you to become a Vintage Geek member. We've got all sorts of extra video content and more. It's all on the website at vintagegeek.com. In a previous video, I took my first look at the Commodore 64. I've always been in awe of this machine since I was a kid, and didn't really know anyone that had one of these that I could actually play with, so I don't have any experience on the system. Now, the last time we got to take the system out, take a look at it, some of its features, and do a little bit of basic basic programming for it, and that was fun. But what I really want to do today is be able to sample some of the prepackaged software for the Commodore 64, which from what I've been told is where the machine really shines and it shows some of its true capabilities. We've got kind of a random assortment of titles here from the museum in our collection. Obviously with over 10,000 software titles, we would never even come close to finding them all, but I figure this will be a good sampling and give me a good feel of just what the Commodore 64 can do in practice. I want to say a special thanks to Justin, our technician here at the museum, he spent a lot of time with the Commodore 64 that we have here. Now you may remember from the last video I did do an experiment with the sound portion of the C64 and unfortunately it did not work. Turns out that wasn't a programming issue. There was an issue with the chip on the board and uh, with some swapping and some different moving around of parts, Justin was able to get our Commodore 64 fully functional again with sound as well as graphics. So uh, we should be good to go for our software titles today. And with that said, Let's get started. I seem to recall as a kid playing the game Spy vs. Spy for the original Nintendo. Now, of course, I was always a fan of Spy vs. Spy growing up. Uh, Mad Magazine was great. And of course, the uh, comics were always an extra treat. And Spy vs. Spy, I had all the little books uh, that had the various comics and really a fun series and a fun thing to see come to life on screen in the form of a game. Now, I do remember this from the original Nintendo, but I don't know that they had both titles. Our Commodore version of this game has Spy vs. Spy, and it also has Spy vs. Spy Volume 2 which was the Island Caper. I don't remember the second of these being a game that I could play for the Nintendo, but I could very well be wrong. Maybe it existed. We just didn't happen to hit that one in Blockbuster at the time in the video game rental section. I'm curious to try this out on the Commodore 64. It looks like it does have color graphics and sound. It's like right off the bat, we've got a choice between the two different volumes here, and I'm gonna go with volume two. Mad Magazine's official Spy vs. Spy, the Island Caper. It looks good. The planes are shooting up the text, that's fun. All right, well, I like the uh, music so far. It's pretty jaunty. Looks like we got a couple of spies dropping on the island. Visually, everything on screen looks pretty good so far. Looks like we've got a number of different uh, items on the left-hand side for each screen here, which I have to assume are each of the different spies that are being represented here. Looks like you could play this with two players. I only have the one joystick today, and it's just me, so we're gonna do the one player mode, it looks like. You can choose the level one through seven. I definitely wanna start with one so I can get a feel for this. Let's see, how do we get started? Do we just hit the joystick button? Yeah, looks like it. I assume I'm at the top. I must be, apparently I'm on the bottom screen now. So the question is, why is my joystick not doing anything? I can move. Well, it looks like I just died. <laughs> I've accomplished something. Where's this guy going? Is he going to escape the island? Looks like he just picked up a missile. <laughs> wow, things have really, really taken a turn here. And that's one way to defeat the enemy. Just destroy the entire island. Looks like we're starting over. At least I can move around now. Whoa, no, no, no. <laughs> well, at least me being in this quicksand has allowed the uh, other spy to miss me. So that's great. But I still haven't figured out how to uh, get out of here. I think I just reset the game, that's fine. Can I pick this up? All right, I got something. All right, so one item at a time. It looks like that's all I can hold. Oh, oh no, it happened to me again. There's gotta be a way out of these, right? Here's the thing about quicksand. If your spy gets trapped, use the techniques recommended by most survivors, which is moving your joystick up and down or twirling it in a circular motion rapidly while trying to move your spy to the edge of the quicksand. Okay. Oh. Let's twirl it around. Come on, you can do it. Come on. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Come on now. <laughs> I need more items. I don't think that I'm doing any good at all here. <laughs> oh, now I'm on the bottom screen. Where do you go? It's 
definitely not swashbuckler, but uh, there is some sword fighting here, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Apparently there is a master timer countdown to the volcano erupting. In this particular case, I didn't make any progress and it looks like we both died, so. This game looks great. I love the music. Uh, the sound effects are fun. It's gonna take a little bit more learning on my part to understand how this actually works. So far, pretty good indication of the capabilities of the Commodore 64. So I'm gonna put this one away for now. I'm gonna have to uh, revisit this game when I have a little bit more time. Next up, I wanna take a look at some early childhood educational software. This one's called Hey Diddle Diddle by a company called Spinnaker, and Spinnaker made a lot of different educational titles. And according to the box, it's a collection of 30 classic nursery rhymes featuring brilliant color graphics and lively music, and there's three fun ways for kids to play. They have a pre-reader mode called Story Time. You can let your beginning reader see each rhyme formed in slow motion with words and pictures, and for more advanced readers, the rhyme game presents two levels of play, different levels for different skill sets, which is pretty cool for an early game in the educational world. I will say whoever had this particular Spinnaker game was very concerned that you were gonna try to take the sleeve out of the package, which apparently is attached to the back. Uh, they left a very distinct note uh, that had a uh, frowny face on it, so <laughs> I'll be sure to be careful. Let's give Hey Diddle Diddle a try. Here we go. Looks like we've got the uh, spoon and plate and the cow jumping over the moon. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, the graphics are a little bit pixelated, but it is a kid's game after all. Uh, sound is great. Love the musical tune going on there. This one's from 1983, the copyright just shows. It looks like we've got uh, three different options. This is probably what we just talked about for the different levels. Let's go straight to the rhyme game and see if we can identify some of these. All right, one player, level one, time on, pictures on, diddle menu, type your name, vintage. Okay, the rhyme game. Okay, so we got a countdown at the top. We got four choices. Am I just supposed to choose one of these or are these all part of the, oh. You're supposed to put it in order? I don't know this nursery rhyme. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I guess F3 and F5 actually also move the arrow up and down and F7 selects, similar to the joystick. So you wouldn't have to use the joystick necessarily. To check the order of the rhyme, move the arrow all the way to the bottom of the screen. The word check will appear. Yes, check. <laughs> Hooray! I could have done it in a lot less time if I would have understood that you need to scroll all the way to the bottom to hit select, but that's cool. Oh, we get a picture version of this, cool. Are we gonna get to see the lion and the unicorn fight or is it just the abstract concept? Oh, it's the rest of the nursery rhyme, okay. Some gave them white bread and some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. Yeah, all right, same game. Let's try this now that I understand the rules. I had a little pony. His name was Doppel Gray. Doppel Gray. I lent him to a lady to ride a mile away. Let's see if we get this will work. All right, it's a much better score this time. Huh. There's Dapple Gray. She whipped him, she slashed him, she rode him through the mire. I would not lend my pony now for all the ladies hire. She sounds terrible. Why you gotta do Dapple like that, huh? All right, wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. It's very aggressive when it tells you you did it. Well, there he is, running through the town. So many stairs. It's a regular M.C. Escher painting right here. Rapping at the window, crying through the lock. Are the children in their beds? For now it's eight o'clock. I'm guessing no. Eight o'clock seems pretty early. Well, this game seems pretty effective. Again, for kids, I think this would have a definite purpose. Certainly learning the nursery rhymes. For the very young kids, just being able to see them with the pictures would be helpful. It's a good piece of kids software. I'm glad we got to try it here on the Commodore 64. Next up, I wanna try a software title from a company called Firebird. Each one of these has a disc inside with two sides, one game on each side. The first one we have is called Booty. That's simply all it's called is Booty. Well, shiver me timbers and splice the main brace and pass the grog, me hearties. Here be the greatest pirate adventure of them all, aboard that scourge of the seven seas, the dreaded Black Galleon. Feast your eyes on the booty full treasure stored in twenty holds. There be pirates, parrots, and fun galore. If you don't like it, matey, we'll hang you by the highest yard arm. <laughs> Gotta love the descriptions on some of this early software. Booting booty. I think that just says it all right there. Silver Disc by Firebird, 1986. Oh, back to booting booty. Okay, connect joystick to control port two. I'm really glad that they told me that. That's gonna save a lot of time and troubleshooting why I can't do anything. Space bar picks up keys and goes through doors. Fire button to start the game. What an interesting scroll on this, <laughs> this game. Someone has a sense of humor. This program is dedicated to Pig and Heaney. 
<laughs> now see, this is pretty cool. I love the movement so far of the character here at the top. The way he turns from side to side, this looks great. Now here's a key, do I pick this up? Sweet, I got a key. Here's another key. Can I pick up more than one key? Great. Let's see if I can go down this ladder. It seems like the logical thing would just be to move the joystick down to go down that ladder, but nothing seems to be working up or down. Oh, got it. I think I just had to be in just the right spot. It's not uh, super intuitive in that regard. <laughs> can I open this door? Oh, sweet. Now I'm in some other hold, but I can't go through that. Pick up his book. Oh. That was surprising. I guess these must be color coded, so you can only go through these when you have the right color key. I can't go through that one. I can't go through there. I am picking up booty along the way though, so that's great. Got 150 worth so far. Can't make it past either of those though. It's very particular about exactly where you are to go up the ladders. Not terrible. Oh, who's this guy? What are you doing? Oh boy, I don't know how to fight. I need that red key for sure. Now I should be able to get to the gold key at the top. Ah, apparently that particular piece of booty was a booby trap and uh, I just died. I feel like this game's pretty clever though. There's a lot of things to pick up, different keys to get through different areas, all sorts of different booty and treasure to collect. And the movement looks great. I'm not super excited about the ladder mechanic just because it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Oh, what happened there? Did not realize that was a uh, trap. Doesn't really seem to be a way to actually fight enemies that I can see. I guess it's just about avoidance. Oh, now there's like two of them on that level. How am I ever going to get that red key? Two pirates and a bird? This is a lot to deal with. Should be able to get this cash now. I like the seeing the water in the little portholes. That's pretty cool. I'm up to 410 in booty now. Ooh, 510. Nice. It's turned into a little bit of a platformer here, I see. Oh. <laughs> A platformer that I failed at very quickly. I like this game. Obviously some creativity went into this. I could play this for a while trying to figure out where all the different items are and then I guess there's a timed round at the end I read in the book that if you can get all of the booty then you have to go through some kind of crazy round where you're timed and try to find everything. So I like uh, what they've done here on the Commodore 64 and uh, anxious to see more. I do tend to have a little bit of a soft spot for racing and car games and I'm really curious to see what one of these would look like on the Commodore 64. We have a game by Mastertronic called The Last V8, and the actual cover art and everything about this particular package really spoke to me. The year is 2008. It's seven years since the global war. The nuclear winter is beginning to pass. The war destroyed civilization as it used to be. The Earth's surface is a radioactive battleground with few survivors. As a scientist working on a secret government military project in a deep nuclear bunker, you were able to survive. During your years underground, you've been working on your own special project, The Last V8, based upon an old car which you owned in the 80s. In any other car, you would stand no chance and the last v8 survival is possible maybe for this game unfortunately our original floppy disk that came in the package did not work we tried several times to get that to load in order to play it which i really wanted to play this game we did load this off of the sd card so it is a later cracked version of the game we do have the original floppy it's just not loading at the moment so let's get down to business here i like the way it looks so far <laughs> is that a skeleton in the road <laughs> wow that's some pretty cool voice synthesis there <laughs> This is sweet. V8, return to the base immediately. I guess maybe that's not supposed to happen at the initial start of the game. Return to the base immediately. Well, that time the explosion happened in a different spot. There's still something wrong here. Why does that keep happening? V8, return to the base immediately. I don't understand this. <laughs> Stuck in the loop forever. Hey Justin, you want to see something funny? <laughs> they get pretty aggressive with the music when everything is game over. I'm not entirely sure why this happened, but the version of the last V8 that we had on the SD card, which as I mentioned was some kind of a hacked version from much later on, has some kind of fundamental problem with it where the screen is not displaying correctly and it gets stuck in this loop of basically starting the game and then immediately exploding the car. I am curious if any of you out there have played the game before the last V8 and uh, maybe you have some insight onto this hacked version. We're gonna try to get the disc working. We have
haven't had any luck doing so so far. It does look like a fun game. I love the graphic representation on the screen, so I'm hoping that we can get a playable version of that game somewhere down the line. That's going to do it for our analysis today of some Commodore 64 titles. Obviously a very small sampling, but gave us some ideas of the capabilities of the system. In the meantime, if you're into vintage tech and vintage computers, I want to encourage you to like and subscribe right here. It's going to help us as we grow at the museum and on the channel. And also, I would encourage you to become a Vintage Geek member. We have all sorts of additional video content features, some code snippets, and a whole lot more. And you can get discounted admission to take a tour of the museum. You can do this all at VintageGeek.com. Until next time, I'm Aaron, and this has been Vintage Geek. Vintage Geek.